There are some boats which defy our intuition and solve specific challenges not achievable through standard design. In a wide spectrum of odd looking, unusual boats, today we'll focus on the ones that fly. Not literally of course, but nevertheless they sure make it look the part. Yes, in this video we'll be taking a closer look at hydrofoils and what makes them work. I'll also outline my latest creation, which surprise surprise is a hydrofoil passenger ferry. As well as looking at some in-game examples, we'll learn about the different types of foils and how they pertain to the real world, and how through their development they have given us some of the coolest and speediest creations IRL and in-game. Let's start with the basics. What even is a hydrofoil? Well, if we split the word in two, we get hydro, a word of Greek origins which means water, and foil, which is sometimes used to describe a surface. And so together, these two make a lifting surface that operates in water, a hydrofoil. Hmm, sounds an awful lot like a wing, but with extra steps. Well, you'd be right. A hydrofoil, or foil as some people call it, boils down to a wing underwater. Because the length of the top curve of the wing is longer than that of the bottom, water flows faster along the top of the foil than the bottom. This creates a lower pressure on the top of the foil, which in turn generates an upward force, pushing the foil towards the surface. But unlike the massive sets of wings on aircraft, hydrofoils are tiny in comparison to their payload. This can be pretty easily explained by the density of air and water. Comparing the two, the water turns out to be at least 816 times as dense as air, at 15 degrees Celsius at sea level. AKA, the hydrofoil has a big advantage over the standard wing, because the same forces have a much bigger impact underwater. However, this advantage quickly turns into a disadvantage when we start trying to balance a vessel on foils, because even tiny movements can have major effects on the pitch and roll of the vessel. Foils must also have a way of controlling the amount of lift they produce, otherwise the vessel will be very hard to stabilize while it pitches. So in order to solve that problem, foils have an adjustable angle of attack, which means the foil can adjust the amount of water being pushed down based on its angle to the flowing water. Airplane wings also have the same feature in the form of flaps or ailerons. As the angle of attack increases, the hydrofoil will generate more lift but also more drag. However, their relationship isn't linear, so if you bring the foil up too high, the drag will overpower the lift and the vessel will stall. Lastly, there are actually two distinct types of hydrofoils out there, surface piercing and fully submerged. The main difference is that surface piercing foils are V-shaped and stick out of the water, which comes in handy since they can provide passive stabilization for the vessel. The second type is fully submerged. These foils basically resemble upside down T's and are not passively stabilized at all. However, they provide a smoother ride in rough weather because there's nowhere for the force of the waves to be applied. Assuming, of course, the boat type that you want to build can even utilize them, hydrofoils have a few caveats. The first is, as I just mentioned, stability. Generally, well-designed boat hulls have a strong tendency to right themselves. This eliminates the need for a large number of control surfaces or the need for them altogether. If the vessel decides to pitch and roll, the hull's shape naturally corrects itself, stabilizing the vessel. The YouTube channel Real Engineering gave a great explanation for this. If you place a ball in a valley, no matter how you roll it, it will always roll back, eventually stopping in the center. This is a regular boat hull, but when a boat is on foils, with no stabilization it acts more like a ball on a mountain, which if pushed the slightest bit, accelerates down the slope, never re to return again. Long story short, raising a boat on foils can cause it to become very unstable. This can be combated with surface piercing hydrofoils or active stabilizer fins. Another drawback is that boats on foils tend to have larger turning circles and are less maneuverable while above the water. The wings also have a deep draft, making it impossible to reach shallow areas of the map. In real life, of course, there are many more disadvantages than in-game, starting with the strength of the hydrofoil, which has to be extremely rigid, plus efficiency drops off after the vessel hits 50 knots, and there's a design and engineering cost which is much greater due to the complexity of the build. Taking a look on the bright side, hydrofoils have a lot to offer, especially in the game of Stormworks. First of all, parameters like top speed and efficiency will obviously increase, which in turn will also make you be able to travel longer distances. You'll also be able to fit smaller engines in your boat, reducing your fuel consumption even further. In small waves, hydrofoils also offer a much smoother ride, because they can glide under the water's surface. However, in large waves, they are basically unusable. But really, the speed advantage of a hydrofoil is a good enough reason for some boats to be fitted with them. They give such a big speed boost for a relatively small upgrade that it makes foils worth it in certain scenarios. In Stormworks, it is almost always worth it to fit your speed boat with hydrofoils. Unlike in real life, safety isn't a concern, so you can basically double, triple, or even quadruple your speed as long as you use powerful engines and stabilize your foils well. A little while ago, I started building a medium-sized hydrofoil passenger ferry. 
I also took a lot of inspiration from the Boeing 929 jet foil, which regularly services the harbors of Hong Kong, and the Japanese Seven Islands Ferry. Although I am sort of satisfied with the way that this boat looks, I think it's in my best interest to use this first attempt as something to learn from. Some gripes that I have with it are how low it sits in the water, the flat design of the back end, the non-retractable foils, and the six block tall cockpit which prevents a player from standing up in it. Nevertheless, this first build is a step in the right direction. To lift it out of the water, I've used two hydrofoils, one in the front and one in the back. Each foil uses two control surfaces which are controlled via PID controllers that keep the front and back ends of the boat at certain altitudes. There are also fins on each side of the foil to stabilize the roll of the ferry. And finally, I have three rudders, one on each stem of the hydrofoils, to control which way the vessel turns. As for the interior, there isn't much as of now, just a few seating areas on the first and second floor. I will be, if I haven't started already, filming a build series on the next Hydrofoil Ferry, so if you want to see updates on that, make sure to hit that subscribe button. As for the automated ferry line, that will get finished sometime in the near future. That's it for me today, and I will see you guys in the next one.